their smoke goes up forever and ever. Why? Well, many might say, well, that means they're going to be alive. No, what did it say? It said um, that uh, God is a consuming fire. When they're consumed, they don't live forever and ever. Their smoke goes up forever and ever. There is an acrostic in the 37th Psalm hidden in the Hebrew manuscripts which stipulates never think that the wicked get ahead. First part of it. Second part, for they shall roast over an open fire like a lamb on a, sp a spit. And when the fat drops into the fire, the smoke goes up forever and ever. And the third part of the acrostic is, in closing, that you're going to be there to see it. Because you're one of God's elect. You're one of God's followers. Okay? And he's not angry at you. But I assure you, all through the millennium, there's going to be a great deal of shame for those that were Christian, thought they were. And, and you know what? Well-meaning. And, and, and this really, it, it hurts me. I get no joy from knowing someone that has warmed a church pew all their life, started out in that church as little children in Sunday school, and really tried hard to be a good Christian, but never had a teacher, never had the truth taught there, well-meaning. And yet they had the Word of God with them all the time if they had only picked it up and absorbed it for themselves instead of listening to some ratchet jaw. I'm not judging, but I am, I am very hard on people that claim to be pastors and mislead God's children. Very hard on them. And, and, and that, that doesn't amount to anything because God's a lot harder on them than that. Judgment begins at the pulpit. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. This is a set aside ones, God's elect. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. These are the ones we're talking about. They don't have anything to worry about. But why? They keep the commandments of God. They don't follow the one world system headed by Satan or join his church, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. That's a very important verse. What can you take to heaven with you? It's answered right there. Your works. Well, well how can, why do I take my works? Because you're judged by them. That's your reward. That's when God judges you in that book of life. Your works are written there. I don't know. Uh, you know, you would be in pretty bad shape if it said by your name that you worship the mark of the beast. That you worship the, the Antichrist and his system. And that's the only works. You really worked hard for Satan. That won't get you anywhere in heaven. Okay. Won't get you anywhere in the book of life other than God's indignation and a part of the abomination of desolation of the end times. It's coming, friend. Make certain you're never a part of it. But your works will go with you. And as you're going to learn in the 19th chapter, verses 7 and 8, that your works create your righteous acts that weave together the fine linen that you wear as a robe in heaven. Otherwise, you'll be naked as a jaybird. Made it to heaven, but look at me. I'm naked as a jaybird. No works. Well, what are works? Well, it can even be a smile to someone that's depressed. It, it can be, you know, just uh, let's take many times women who are housewives, they feel they never do any works and they do the hardest work in the world. Just waiting on a family and taking care of them, giving them a good home and, and a Christian upbringing. Talk about works. Talk about rewards. Okay, But uh, rewards fall and works fall in many ways. 
But never forget that 13th verse of this 14th chapter of Revelation. That's your reward, is your works.